Hey guys, another video for our buying a house in Japan playlist. So back at the old farmhouse here. Been slowly getting all the painting done. Back of the house is done. Most of the other buildings are done. However, there's this dodgy little bit in here that was sort of purposefully bypassed because of this dodgy awning here that needed to be replaced because it was all full of rust. So there wasn't a lot of point in painting that or the area around it, so it was sort of left. So, time to attack it. We've replaced a few roofs, small ones and big ones around the farmhouse that are made the same as this. So we know how they made them because they made them all the same. And the tricky bit about it is that where it joins onto that roof, onto that wall, the flashing actually goes up behind the wall itself. So we'll get to that in a second. First, we need to find out if we've got enough tin lying around the house. So all we've got is leftover bits from previous jobs. So they're the three biggest leftover bits that we have, right? So measured them up. Okay, we can, we can do it with this, <laughs> with the leftovers. We love doing this because it's good. It saves us money. It means we can, don't have to spend any money, which is great. And it also, using the old materials, you know, it's better than just having them sitting in a corner somewhere, taking up space. So decided there was a common length that we could get out of each of those three pieces, and that would be enough. And they were just enough width on them to, to be able to do it. So it was just enough, basically. Cut a little bit off just to make them the right size. That one just needed more dusting than anything else. <laughs> Clean it up. Cut that one to size. For those of you who haven't seen this before, these really good snips, they actually have curves in them to, that matches the corrugate, which is just excellent for those. Cuts right through them. So next job was to remove the nails. That's a noisy job. So all the nails out, keeping a tidy work site, throwing them all in the tin as we go. So the nails are out. Now the tricky bit is where it joins the wall. So don't want to lift that wall off. Now some of you would have seen we did a huge job a while ago with a huge tin wall like this, tin roof like this, and where it joined the wall, all the vertical tin had to be removed or the bottom of it did. To get underneath it so it's just too much basically bottom line is <laughs> don't want to do that because it's just too much and it's, it opens a can of worms you start pulling that wall off and all of a sudden you got all sorts of problems so didn't want to do that so decided to try a different approach so the unskilled metal worker cut just before it joins so the rusty bits all a bit exposed where it actually joins the wall isn't rusty because it was covered by that flashing so I cut it with an angle grinder and got rid of it. And a bit of rust there on, that's actually a bit of flashing over the top of an armado box. <laughs> so while we're there, get the rust off that. So it's really hard to show you all this stuff because it's hard to find somewhere to put the camera. Don't want to be too close because it'll get hit with something. So, okay, so it's off. And then see up here, you'll see where it's cut, see? Now the plan is we can use that because that's got nails through it. That bit that's left, we can't just pull that out because that's got nails through it. So that's really solid in there. And so's the wood above it. So that means if you put a new sheet in between that corrugate and that wood, it won't move. So once the nails are in at this end, right? So anyway, you'll see. You'll see the plan. So trying to fit it in between the piece of corrugate that's left in there and the wood above it. And it fitted really nicely, of course. 
So doing them all first before hammering a nail, because when you're working with with structure that isn't square, it's better to make sure it all fits first. Learned that by error, <laughs> trial and error. So okay, so that all works. Marking where that little beam is underneath, so nowhere to put the nails. So put a line across, okay, so we know where, to, where it's okay to put a nail in. Now see where it joins the wall now, it's not going to move up there. Once we get nails, the only way it can move is towards the fat man there, right? So if we put nails in here, there's no way that can come out now. And then that flashing gets, gets screwed down too. So it's not going to go anywhere. And then once it's all painted, the only bit of tin that was, that was left, we cut the rusty bit, bits off. That bit that's left isn't rusty because it was under the flashing. So that's all cool too. So it's a good plan. <laughs> so nails in. Geez, that's noisy. Working with that stuff is so noisy. If it was a bigger job, the, the unskilled labourer would have worn earmuffs for that because it's a noisy job. There was nails holding that flashing to that wood, but they left holes and the other nails aren't long enough. So we're using big screws there, long screws. So screws into that wood underneath the flashing and that holds it in place because the flash that wood under the flashing is held in place by big nails so it works it works so there it is done so that was much better much better than peeling that that wall off if we peeled the bottom of that wall off it would have been a huge job and it could have lent led to all sorts of other dramas too so See? <laughs> it worked. First time we attempted a, a, an approach like that, and it worked well. So if we have that same problem again in the future somewhere else, we'll use that same approach, because that's solid. That will withstand a typhoon, no problem. All right, so unskilled painter and his spray gun. It was a little bit windy that day, but between the two buildings there, it sort of funnels, and it even if there's just a little bit of wind, it's always really windy between those buildings. So it blew it around a bit. But it, it sort of looks worse than it is. It doesn't seem to settle. The, the, the spray that you can see, that sort of mist that you can see, doesn't sort of settle anywhere. So it's really fine, just falls, disappears, you don't sort of see it, doesn't seem to get anywhere it's not supposed to be, doesn't seem to get on the unskilled painter terribly much, it's, it's not as bad as it looks. No face mask this day either because the wind was sort of blowing it downwind anyway so it wasn't really a problem. Loving the spray gun. So up to the before and after already, guys. So that was the bit of wall above that was left unpainted just because I had to come back to this anyway. So that's what that looked like. And the rusty awning looked like. The awning of rust. That's what it looks like today. Much improved, isn't it? So that'll last as long as we need it to and withstand a typhoon, quietly confident. <laughs> we'll, we'll know soon. <laughs> Another few months, we'll be in a typhoon season. We'll test that out, won't we? But yeah, it's pretty well. It was well made in the first place. This old place was pretty well made when they first built it. So we're just sort of maintaining that, aren't we? Anyway, there was that. More videos coming soon.